to my hallucination scouts, and I'm just gonna make blink stalkers and more blink stalkers with my colossi. I don't even know if he had like a sentry in that army, man. He was like, nah, blink stalker like, and colossus. He had like one or two, you know, for some force fields and the guardian shield. Well, guys, we are going to game number three here on Overgrowth. Up here in the top right in the red, he's up 2-0, oh, impressing me today. It is super. And he had that rally on the probe down there to the natural, so we may see a forge. We may indeed. Gonna change it up. His opponent down to the bottom left, by the way, is Biel in blue. I think most people favoring him, actually, in this matchup. 100%, but I had forgotten how good super was. He's just really impressing me today. Uh, here we got this forge coming down. And so far, no scout out of Biel. Okay, there we go. Well, you know, uh, I want to point something out, by the way, uh, completely unrelated to this series. Um, something I've been wanting to talk about and mention a lot more. Uh, this stream is on Twitch and Azubu, by the way. So I know some of you, I get a lot of tweets about this pretty much every day, and I haven't really addressed this. Um, but this stream will be available on Twitch and Azubu all season long and, and I think all year long as well. So if you have issues with one platform or the other, you could just switch to the other one. It's, it's actually an awesome thing that we have this available on both. Uh, I know that a lot of people, you know, really don't know that much about Azubu, but it's a great platform to actually watch StarCraft on. Great quality. And, uh, you know, the chat system is getting implemented and getting better all the time. And, uh, Tasis and Artosis, I know, have been spending a lot of time chatting over there. So if you get yep. lucky... Uh, while this platform's building, you might even give it, be able to chat with them almost personally while things are still small. So go over there and check that stream out if you haven't yet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, so far we did have Biel with the scout, and he knows that Super did go for that forge, so he immediately... Well, he pulled back for a while here, but he's actually sending in the drone right now to oh! try to block, but he just barely misses! So close! So close! That's the kind of timing, man, that can get into your head. And just get you tilted, actually, where you just just barely miss. Man. Thankfully, he is able to get the hats down at his own base, but it's a little bit late here, as it was blocked for a while. Part of being a pro gamer is actually just having this patience and, and not losing your cool. Imagine if Super had actually pylon blocked that uh, hatchery right oh, here man. for a second. He almost did it. If he did that, if I were Biel and I was like on a losing streak on the ladder, I probably would just like alt forward after the, out of the game and would have just been like, I gotta do something else for a while. I gotta go outside and catch some air or something. <laughs> I mean, Biel's down two games in this series, misses the block. He yeah. already had to go pool first, which he doesn't want to do. And we've seen Biel's face this entire match. After every loss, he just looks so crushed. He's like, oh man, he's like got his face in his hands. The coach came in and he had a word with him, so we're gonna have to wait and see if that helped him out. Yeah, and that wasn't even um, Coach Park in there, actually. I'm not sure who was in there talking to him. Um, but he's got that support, which is really important. Super flying solo today, doesn't even have anybody here in the studio with him, and he doesn't <laughs> need it, man. He's been looking tip top shape. Ooh. Be careful, little Zerling. That cannon's gonna shoot you, man. It's not gonna tell you about it first. So, this game progressing pretty normally now. I mean, Biel's third base at a pretty normal timing. Uh, his hatch was a little bit late because he planned on hatch blocking. It didn't work out, and there was an annoying probe uh, doing that blocking at the natural as well. So, not the best opening here for Biel, but he's stabilized now. Probe somehow sneaks by those links. Yeah, um, I don't think Biel was looking, actually. We'll get out onto the map here. And whenever you're playing a Protoss player, I'm sure you guys out there who are not Protoss players, you're like, Oh no, there's a probe on the map, that means pylons, that means scouts even. You do not want to let that on the map, especially when you got your Zerglings at the front door. Like you were saying, I think just not paying attention was Biel here. Yeah, I think he was looking at his Overlord that was actually heading towards the main base, because he was pulling that back at the exact same time. And then right after that, as the, link, as the probe passed out of his vision, he went to look at the Overlord to check for the Forge timing to see if plus one was being researched. So I think he just barely was looking at something else and just did not catch that. His links were on hold position as well, so they didn't start to chase. That's what we just saw there. Was that you could see the links didn't even react to that Stalker when it moved out. So 
And now with this probe out on the map, we got a Kerna boost here on the Cybernetics Core. We got two more gates coming down as well as that plus one going to finish up. We've seen Super do this build pretty consistently. Build do, did throw a wrench into it, just messed up the timing a little bit in game two with that hatch block. But here we go. This is going to be pretty clean here, and it's going to force a lot out of Biel once again. Yeah, literally only has one Ling on the map. Ten in production right now. Those would have liked to be five drones, those larvae. But uh, this is going to be a lot of pressure with plus one. And since he does not have a Roach Warren, if uh, Super realizes this, he might actually be able to just warp in a big round of Zealots or two off those three gates and uh, continue the pressure so heavily that Biel gets overwhelmed. He doesn't know this yet. He also doesn't know that Link's speed is way behind, too. If he knew those two things for sure, he might actually even add another gateway. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how much damage he can done. Still going to be a lot of pressure here. He's already supply blocked, and he's going to lose an Overlord. He's only got two in production, so oh, no. this is nasty, man. These are the only units we're going to see for a very long time here at Abiel. He's making four Overlords. One Stalker does actually get surrounded here, and he's actually going to force the recall here. I think Super getting a little bit overzealous. Could have just waited for another warp in. But again, I, I feel like this push still did the job it was supposed to do. It forced out so many lings, forced out that early Rotorn as well. And uh, Bill's economy going to be a bit behind here. He does have that third base. The stalker super. Is, oh, yeah, the Super, I was going to say, his, his, uh, his Stalker Overlord cleanup crew is also going to really annoy Bill. He gets two more Overlord kills. And at this point, with the uh, gates we're seeing here, the plus one armor and the Immortals, I think we're just going to see a follow-up push because he forced a lot of Lings. He knew the tech was in an awkward place. For Biel, though, there was no Roach Warren, and so that means there's basically not going to be any Roaches out right now either. He would have seen them yeah. already by now. So to do this Immortal follow-up is a pretty cool idea. He doesn't hide it, actually. He's not even scared of uh, letting Biel know about this. So Biel's going to have full knowledge of this. He is going to make those Hydras in a bit here. And uh, this is a map overgrowth that we see Protosses usually do not want to go late game against Zerg. I think we saw Life actually crush a Protoss on this map recently. And uh, it was not pretty. Uh, life's been doing that a lot these days. So we do see Super kind of mix it up here, not try to uh, transition into Colossae or do anything like that. No third base here. He's just going to try to go for the all-in. We saw Parting try to do this yesterday as well. Yeah, uh, against Dark. Dark uh, shut it down. He had a great scout of it. He was completely prepared. In this case, though, Bill's getting a little bit of a later information about this. And he's trying to defend this with Hydralis, and he doesn't even have a single one out yet. 13 are on the way, and they're all, all going to come out together, so not going to stream out one by one and get blasted by these Immortals, but let's see how good the force fields here of Super are. He has seven sentries. A lot of those sentries fairly freshly warped in, so most of them not at full energy right now. So, you know, that's something that uh, we have to keep in mind here. He doesn't have, a, you know, infinity force fields that he can drop down here immediately. He's going to have to be careful with how he uses those. Let's see if Bill decides to flank it. I think that might be the right choice, but he doesn't have creep over there. Oh, and fighting against a lot of those zealots with the Zerglings loses a big chunk of those as well. He's starting to get this uh, really nice concave here, but the force fields have to be good. That's the name of the game here. He has to force a lot of those Hydras to not be attacking. He has to attack from a good angle here. This is pretty good, but he does miss a decent chunk there. And that's five force field spends already. And he kills that creep tumor. And the longer this fight goes on, that creep's going to recede. He doesn't. He isn't not able to get that concave. He's not able to get that uh, arc that he would like to have with his Hydra series. Now got a pretty decent position, actually using the force fields against this Protoss army. Zealots aren't able to close the distance, and he gets a bit of a wide arc here. But the question is, does he have enough stuff? I don't know if he does. There's so many gateways behind this push man, and he's already got three immortals in the mix. So Roaches are never going to do anything against this. He Immortals. catches a lot of Hydras over there in the north part of this fight as well. Yeah, this is actually just too much. I think that we're about to see Super 3 OBL. I can't believe it. And he made it look super easy. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, this is just lights out, man. Immortals do a crazy amount of damage. They're, they're just... Even the Hydras. Yeah, man. exactly. Even the light units. They just blast these massive shots out. They're so tanky. And when you get this giant ball of Protoss units with six seven or even eight gates. I didn't see yet the total amount of gates in this game here. You can just make so many units. And there you go. GG. Super gets the 3-0 against Biel. I think it was, yeah, seven gates. Might have been eight. It's a ton of production. And if you try to go Hydras against this, if you can get a mass amount of Hydras out, 
yeah, you're going to be fine if you can get a good position. I said uh, to get the flank earlier, I meant to say to get the concave, you know, get those hydras on the arc on the right yeah. side where he had that one tumor, which then got picked off. And then after that, with the force field, he just got slowed down again and again with his army, never able to fight the way he wanted to. Bill just got 3 0'd. This is actually just, I can't even. Like, I, Super's a good player. Very surprising. And I, and I wouldn't have been shocked to see him win the series, but he just, he owned it up. And he actually breaks the chain of these players on foreign teams actually losing and getting crushed. He's actually just flipping that table over. Yeah, seems to be the one outlier so far. And uh, he showed some of that more impressive play. <laughs> Clean 3 0 victory. Congratulations. And he says thank you. 어 일단 예선을 뚫고 나서 일단 목표를 8강으로 잡았기 때문에 16강까지도 My goal after the go uh, qualifiers was round of 8. So he'll still have to advance from the round of 16 to be truly satisfied. 특별히 어려운 점은 없으셨나요? 어 어떻게 보면 좀 어려운 면이 있긴 한데 그래도 지금까지는 극복 가능한 거 같은 수준이어 가지고 성적을 보여주고 있기 때문에 네. 괜찮은 거 같아요, 지금까지. 프로라스 네. is are having a pretty hard time recently, but it's still okay and it's still okay and it's still getting uh, pretty good results. So uh, he thinks he'll do well in the future as well. 돌 쪽으로 돌아서 가더라고요. 미처 신경 쓰지 못했는데 처음에 근데 그것보다도 해철여 씨를 당해가지고 말렸었는데. So, he's saying he actually got caught pretty car off guard by that hatchery rush, but he was able to manage his units really well and his economy anyways, so... Just uh, not, not getting too shaken up there. So he's just saying he's going to try his best to advance around the 16 and show good performances. And then when I'm in the round of 8, if I make it there, I'll set a new goal. And of course, thanking him for that interview. Uh, so I tweeted about this earlier, um, but uh, our interviewer girl is uh, Hyun Gyung is her name, uh, Lee Hyun Gyung. And a lot of people were asking me about that. I saw it was like a post on Reddit as well. I yeah. think that's where most of those tweets at me came from. Um, but now you guys know for sure. So just giving yeah. you guys a little She's tidbit. pretty cool. Very nice person. Yeah, pretty cute. Good interviewer girl. Yeah. But guys, before we go into our next match, we are going to have a seven-minute break. So stay tuned. Spread the word. We'll see you soon.